we've been very excited to finally get our hands on Pioneer's new DMH floating display head units. The Pioneer DMH WT7600 Next is a 9 inch HD capacitive touchscreen floating display singleton stereo and has basically every feature you could think of wireless Apple CarPlay and wireless Android Auto, a massive 9 inch display with unique mounting adjustments built-in Wi-Fi and hotspot capabilities to use the internet, Amazon Alexa, HD radio, plus a 720p HD screen, finally Pioneer. However, you're going to have to cough up some serious cash for this head unit, coming in at $1,000. That's the same price for like a solid 4K TV or even a weekend vacation somewhere what is the difference between the DMH WT7600 Next and the DMH WT8600 Next? The 8600 Next has a 10.1 inch display and the 7600 Next has a nine inch display. Other than that, they have identical features and accessories. We will be testing the audio performance, so stay tuned in a few minutes for that. And find out at the end of the video what my biggest cons are with this head unit to judge whether or not the stereo is worth the steep price tag. Inside the box is a wiring harness. External microphone for Bluetooth hands-free calling. USB-C extension cable. USB-C to USB adapter to connect your phone. RCA harness which features 4 volt RCA preamp outputs for front to rear and subwoofer. Video outputs, backup camera inputs, second camera inputs, and 3.5mm auxiliary inputs. GPS antenna which must be plugged in for wireless Apple CarPlay and wireless Android Auto. Screen mounting brackets. Mounting hardware, wireless remote control, warranty card, caution guides, quick start guide, installation manual, single din stereo chassis. into 9 inch floating display. The rear connections include GPS antenna, steering wheel control, External microphone for Bluetooth calling. Identaling Maestro RR USB C. Wiring harness for power ground and speaker. Micro HDMI input. Input output harness. Plus pigtails for Sirius XM and radio antenna. There's clearly a lot going on in the back of this stereo when everything is plugged in. So the single then chassis is very beneficial for fitting all expandability options inside the dash. Initial cold boot time is decent, and warm boot time is a little faster. By warm boot, I mean that the stereo has already been wired up and turned on before. Then the warm boot simulates what the rest of your boots will look like. Let's look a little more closely at two significant changes Pioneer has made. Instead of the normal USB type A input, which we've seen on every stereo ever, Pioneer opted for a USB C input to be used with the included USB extension and USB C to USB type A adapter. Why would they do this? Speed. USB C is much faster and more versatile than USB type A. And over time, USB C's will replace all USB type A's. 
USB-C enables faster data transfer between two devices and significantly faster charging of all of your devices. The second big change in the back is the addition of a micro HDMI input and elimination of RCA AV inputs. This makes marrying a smartphone or device to the stereo much easier. For iPhone, you'll need an HDMI to micro HDMI cable and a lightning digital AV adapter. Android USB-C requires an HDMI to micro HDMI cable, HDMI coupler, and our BUC HDMI, HDMI to lightning cable. We sell the MHDMI 6, 6 foot cable, and the MHDMI A adapter online at qualitymobilevideo.com. When it comes to displays, the DMH WT7600 NEX has one of the best I've ever tested. The 9-inch 720p HD screen looked great and is just what we've been waiting for. It's also a capacitive touchscreen, meaning it's highly responsive and similar to your smartphone. I found the 7600 NEX to be more responsive than the 8600 NEX. The screen prefers quick taps instead of a normal firm press. So how would you install this head unit? Like a normal single DIN? Yes! All you need is the vehicle specific single DIN dash kit for your vehicle and installation is pretty straightforward. Also mounting the actual display to the chassis requires some work with a screwdriver. Similar to the Sony XAV AX8000's customizable mounting design, the DMH WT7600 NEX has a unique mounting system that allows for the adjustment of multiple tilt angles, depth and height. There are five vertical steps for height, two positions for depth, and its tilt positions encompass a 75 degree angle, 60 degrees down, and 15 degrees up. One thing Pioneer improved from the Sony is the display location, giving you three mounting locations to the right side, center, or left side of the chassis. The first step in mounting the display, select your depth position, normal or extended. Next, choose the location for the display. Screw the mount into the chassis. Plug the RGB cable from the chassis into the input on the rear of the display. There are some grooves to keep the wire tucked in. For more unique installations, there's an optional 5 foot CD RGB 150E extension cable, meaning you could literally put the display anywhere you want in your vehicle. Next, screw the display onto the mount at your desired vertical position. Then slide the rear cover over the mount. If you want to tilt the display, push or pull from the base of the display for your preferred angle. The tilting is possible from two very tight sturdy bolts. I still give Sony the edge with their mount. It still seems more stable than the Pioneer, but the non-center mounting of the Pioneer is a nice feature for some vehicles. Again, the DMH WT7600 NEX is completely packed with features, so get comfortable while we go over everything. The first thing you'll notice is the new software compared to the previous NEX models. It kind of reminds me of an Android head unit operating system, and that's sort of what Pioneer's going for. There are new commands like swiping up and down for different pages like suggested radio stations and notifications, and you can even move sources around like a smartphone or Android head unit. It's a fresh take on Pioneer's typical OS. We'll get into all that in a little bit. First up, wireless Apple CarPlay and wireless Android Auto. Both are two of the most highly in-demand features in car stereos today. These apps integrate several of your smartphone's first-party and third-party audio and navigation apps to the stereo. Video apps do not transfer. And Apple CarPlay has taken a step above Android with their new design and OS. Thanks to iOS 14 updates, Apple now gives several new wallpapers to choose from in Apple CarPlay. I love this new feature, Apple CarPlay all day. Apple CarPlay and Android Auto will also work via a direct USB connection, the benefit of which delivers a charge to your mobile device when plugged in. The HD display makes these apps look even better. While using Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, when you exit the home screen, the album art of whatever you're listening to is fully displayed. The stereo does not have built-in navigation, but I prefer smartphone navigation anyways, specifically Google Maps. For navigation, the edge goes to Android because it offers pinch-to-zoom touch commands in their Google Maps. 
In order to connect to wireless Apple CarPlay or wireless Android Auto, you have to connect to the stereo's Wi-Fi, which is simple. Find it on your smartphone's Wi-Fi settings. Enter the password that is shown in the stereo's Wi-Fi settings, and you're good to go. When connecting Wi-Fi, make sure you scroll through all the privacy agreements or else it will limit what you can do and you'll have to reset the factory settings. Trust me, I know from experience. And don't forget, in order to use them wirelessly, you must have the GPS antenna installed. Speaking of Wi-Fi, like an Android head unit, the DMH WT7600 Next can connect to a Wi-Fi or hotspot source, giving you access to the internet anytime you want. This will also allow internet browsing. But just to be clear, you cannot download apps onto the stereo. In order to access the internet, you'll have to download the Car AV Assist app from the Google Play or App Store. While connected to the stereo via Wi-Fi or hotspot and with Bluetooth, register your head unit inside the Car AV Assist app. With this app, you'll be able to establish website defaults like YouTube, Google, or whatever you want. Browsing the internet is easy but a little time consuming with using the massive keyboard. The app will also directly reflect on the rest of your entertainment widgets. Besides websites, you'll be able to register sports teams to have their schedules displayed on the stereo. Location for weather. Plus, you can customize the layout of the home screen from the app. Referencing back to when I mentioned moving sources around, this OS offers complete customization of your home screen. Move sources and apps around, adjust the sizes of them, move the bottom source panel to the top, whatever you want. I set this home screen to probably what I would do in my own car, with the audio video source as the largest widget. I can also see the clock, Boston sports updates, and local weather. Next up, we got Amazon Alexa, which you get for free on this stereo. You don't already need an Alexa account, just an Amazon account. When you select the Amazon Alexa button, it gives you a prompt with a URL and code. Follow both up on your smartphone and you'll be good to go. Alexa is great for playing music, finding out news, local weather, and she answers pretty much anything you ask her. A blue audio bar comes up on the bottom when she's listening or talking. Similar to an Android stereo, Pioneer has new swipe source options. It brings you to the source menu. Swiping left, swiping right opens Alexa. Swiping down brings up suggested radio stations in the area. and swiping up accesses other apps and notifications. These things will only come up if you're connected to the stereo via Wi-Fi and Bluetooth. Let's not forget that this is a stereo, so what are the audio features? For music and audio playback, the HD Radio Tuner broadcasts your favorite stations in CD quality audio with artist tags. Bluetooth will allow hands-free calling plus streams your music wirelessly from your phone with music tags. The USB port connection provides album artwork which is displayed on the home screen, but you have to enter the iPod source to get out of CarPlay or Android Auto. Use the rear auxiliary inputs for high quality audio from an external source. Using a thumb drive, the radio is compatible with MP3, WMA, AAC, WAV, DSD, and FLAC audio files. And for video, it plays MPEG-1, MPEG-2, AVI, and DivX files. You can also upload and view JPEG images and set one to your wallpaper. We understand that there are a lot of inputs and jacks located on the rear of this stereo and you don't want them sticking out on your dash. The best way to consolidate all your inputs is with a jack panel. This way your HDMI, USB, auxiliary can all be accessed in one spot and it can look like a factory installation. We offer a ton of options of jack panels online at qualitymobilevideo.com, link in the bio below. The stereo is Sirius XM ready with the optional SXV 300V1 Universal Tuner and steering wheel control ready with the ASWC1 interface. Links in the bio for both. 
Connecting with an iDialing Maestro RR integrates your vehicle with factory audio systems and adds OBD2 support. With vehicle information allowing you to check out gauges, tire pressure, adjust climate control, and parking assist. Link in the bio to purchase that. Keep in mind, adding the Maestro will add an additional $130 to this head unit, bringing it to a total of $1,130. That's a lot of money for a stereo. The DMH WT7600 Next features two camera inputs. The backup camera is pretty straightforward, and the second camera can be activated at any time and has many potential uses. Adjust the display settings of the stereo. Pioneer offers several preset wallpapers to choose from, including a few animated ones. Plus, you can upload your own JPEG. Change the overall color theme of the radio. Plus the illumination buttons or scan them. Its audio settings put you in full control of your sound. Let's test this thing out. The first test we ran was two channels driven at four ohms, 14.4 volts, one kilohertz EQ flat. Our audio precision will generate our signal and measure distortion. At volume 33, our HP 8903B audio analyzer picked up 20.84 watts RMS, 0.8% distortion, into 9.058 volts of output. We can swap between channels. Our AMM1 read 15 watts. We got 9.07 volts on the Lumi, and we drew 5.63 amps of current. Down to 40 hertz, at volume 32, our HP picked up an identical 20.84 watts RMS, 1.02% distortion, and 9.06 volts of output. Channel swap. Our AMM1, Read 17 watts RMS. We got 9.09 .09 volts on the Lumi and we drew 5.8 amps of current. Next, we tested the RCA preamp outputs. At 40 hertz, full volume 40, we got 4.62 volts with 0.68% distortion. At 1 kilohertz, full volume 40, we got 3.81 volts with 1% distortion. Our final test was frequency response. We used our audio precision to run up each frequency. Before we finish up, let's go over some quick cons. The cost is nuts. The WT7600 next is $1,000. If you can ball out and afford that, all the power to you, but a lot of people will not be willing to invest that much money on a car stereo. Hopefully these features and screen sizes will trickle down to lower cost models. Pioneer's new DMH line does a pretty decent job competing with Android-based head units and offers excellent sound quality, but there are still some hoops you have to jump and limitations to the stereo's capabilities. To browse the internet, you must download the Car AV Assist app and you can't download apps directly onto the stereo, like you can on an Android head unit. The capacitive touchscreen isn't quite as responsive as other head units I've tested.
Because of the new USB-C input, if you lose the adapter, you'll have to get a new one, which can be a pain. The mount is very cool, but has a lot of adjustments and parts. I can see someone messing this up if they're not paying attention quite right. Would you drop $1,000 on the DMH WT7600 next? Let us know below. Go to qualitymobilevideo.com to get all of your car audio and video gear with us today. Links for everything in the bio below. If you enjoyed this video, go ahead and click that like button. Join the conversation below and subscribe to our channel if you're new. Thanks for watching.